Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we look at God's Word together and spend what we call meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you so very much for joining us uh, this week. Well, this week, here's the message that we will um, attempt to uh, unpack the entire week. The message is simply this. It is a, a challenge and it is a salutation. And here it is. The challenge and the salutation for the week is this. Refuse to be miserable. Refuse to be miserable. Now, implicit in this salutation uh, is the notion or the idea that we are in life just as happy as we choose to be. Now, somebody's going to push back on that. And they're going to say to me, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know the sickness I'm going through. You don't know the chemotherapy I'm going through. You're, you're, I get it. And I'm not trying to minimize any tragedy or pain or challenges that anyone is going through. But when it comes to misery, that's in our hands. Um, we don't have an option about problems but we do have an option on whether or not we let our problems make us miserable. And we're going to look at what the Word of God has to say about what is in our control and hands in terms of how we to respond to all of the challenges of life, refusing to be miserable. And this week, I'm going to give you some principles day by day on what you can do if you choose not to be miserable. And one of the things that you can do that can help uh, eliminate misery is one, don't sweat the small stuff. Or another way of saying it, Jesus would say, don't worry. Because if you want to be miserable, then get in the habit. And it is a habit. We have to learn how to be worriers. And some of us are PhDs when it comes. We got a PhD in worry because we practice it so much. We consistently and, and proficiently practice what Jesus told us not to do, namely worry. Listen to what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, recorded in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. This is why I tell you, do not be worried about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive or about clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth more than food and isn't, stop here, the body worth more than clothes. Now, Jesus says, do not be worried. He didn't say, I want to make a recommendation that you don't worry. He didn't say, let me offer you a su suggestion. Uh, don't, don't worry. It is an emphatic and it is an implicit command. Don't worry. Now, what is worry? Worry is simply bringing either yesterday's load or tomorrow's load in today's haul. That's what it is. It's bringing either yesterday's load or tomorrow's anticipated load into today's haul. God wants us to carry today's haul today and don't start worrying about tomorrow's haul until tomorrow comes. You remember that Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Jesus had a thief on the left and he had a thief on the right. And daily, the devil would have us to be crucified between two thieves. And here are the two thieves. The thief called yesterday, our past, something we're worried about in the past that we did are, are left undone and we're taking that with us, we're dragging it around with us into today. And the second thief that robs us is the thief of tomorrow, something that we're anticipating, some anxiety about how we're going to meet the needs of tomorrow. But Jesus said, uh-uh, I just want you to take it one day at a time. And whenever you're bringing in something from yesterday or something that you anticipate that will happen tomorrow into today, life breaks down. It is not the things of today that will break you down. It is only when we bring the loads and the burdens of yesterday and the loads and the burdens of tomorrow into today that we break down. Jesus said, pray 
give us this day our daily bread. Give me just enough bread to get through today. See, in life, you will always have certain circumstances. You will have uncontrollable circumstances. So many things are outside of your control. Let me ask you a question. All the things you're worrying about, think about it. Are they outside your control? There's nothing you can do about it. So why worry about the things that are outside your control? Second thing we worry about is um, our exaggerated imagination. Uh, our imagination always exaggerates, makes things worse. Like Chicken Little gets hit in the head with an acorn. And what did Chicken Little do? Chicken Little ran around telling folks that the sky is falling when it was simply an acorn that was falling. And your imagination can cause you to think all types of things. Studies show that 95% of the things that we're worried about never happens. In fact, in a strange sort of way, we kind of do worry, bring some of those things that we're worrying about into our life. So it's, it's these uncontrollable cir circumstances. It's, it's our exaggerated ima imagination. And here's foundational to worry. Foundational to worry is this. We don't trust God. That's what we're saying. We're saying, God, I don't believe you got me. I don't believe that you have me. And if you worry, my God. You can tell by the worry. You can see it in the sores you have in your stomach called an ulcer. You can see it by the lines you have on the face called your face called wrinkles. You can see it um, by the these things that hang from your eyes we call bags. See, your body and your mind live so close together that they catch each other's diseases. Whatever's going on in your mind will make an impact upon your body. That is why when people are depressed, what happens? They either lose weight or they pick up weight because the mind and the body live so close together. Jesus says, don't worry. Why should we not worry? We should not worry, first of all, because it's wasteful. Let me give you some rhyme words. Let's rhyme this thing. Don't worry because worry is wasteful. It's stewing without doing. It's sitting in a rocking chair, a lot of exercise, rocking back and forth. But when you get through with it, you're still in the same situation. Worry never paid a bill. Worry never brought reconciliation. Reverend, worry never did anything. It just made things worse. So worry is wasteful. It's wasteful. Let me make it rhyme. Secondly, worry is harmful. It's wasteful. It's harmful. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 25 uh, says this about worry. It says worry can rob you of happiness. Or that's the Bible's way of saying it, where it can make you miserable, but kind words can cheer you up. Now, you know, if you don't have anyone to say any kind words to cheer you up, then guess what? Say kind words to yourself. Learn to have a good, your inner dialogue. Say some kind words to yourself. Tell yourself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell yourself no good thing will he withhold from me that they that walk up right before him. Tell yourself, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for thou art with me because weary is wasteful. Weary is harmful. And then we're going to make it rhyme. Finally, it's wasteful. It's harmful. It's sinful. Because when you worry, you're saying, I don't trust God. And Jesus constantly says, fear not. 365 times in the Bible, fear not. And if you're not trusting, you're going to be tripping. So right now, trust God. Refuse to be miserable right now and say, if I'm going to pray, I'm going to give it to God and I'm going to let God handle it. If you're going to pray, don't worry. But if you're going to worry, don't pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, forgive us for the sin of worrying. And don't let us bring yesterday's burdens and tomorrow's burden in today's haul, today's load. You've given us enough grace to get through today. So we trust you today and we'll deal with tomorrow when tomorrow comes. Thank you, Lord, that some things, while they are out of our control, some things are in our control. 
and we can be happy and joyful in all circumstances and situations. Bless your people today. And for those who all year have been worrying, deliver them, I pray, from this evil. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you real good. I appreciate you so very much. Uh, the reason I'm doing this series is because I was talking with someone and they planted this idea in my mind about m how miserable they were. And so I said, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to address that in some powerful points to ponder. There might be something you need for me to address from the word of God when the powerful points to ponder. Please send me a note, send me an email. If you don't have a church, come on and join uh, here at St. Stephen Church and contact us at newstart at ssclive.org. Uh, That's at newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. Thank you so very much. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. But until then, here's the final salutation. You know what it is during COVID-19. Uh, stay safe. Stay sane. And if you can, stay home. And don't forget to stay ready to vote. Wait a minute. I don't have to say that, do I? Because we voted. Congratulations. And not only did we vote, but there is a transition that took place. Next week, I'm going to talk about what that means for the black community, the transition that's, that is taking place with the new president, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But anyway, God bless you. See you tomorrow.